Paul, oh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tim Howarth, Chief Executive of United World Schools. I'm conscious that we've reached that point in the day where energy levels might just be starting to drop off slightly. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, I, I thought about the brief that we were given as, as presenters, uh, which, by the way, was an excellent brief, uh, folks from, from Terrapin. Uh, we were asked to be candid. Uh, we were asked to be engaging. We were asked to be insightful. And this bit I really liked. Uh, we were asked to be humorous. Now, I'm not very good at telling jokes, so I was hoping everybody here might humour me uh, as part of that process. So I thought we might start with a small challenge. It has nothing to do with that picture just behind me, but it is hopefully one that we can just get a little bit of energy from. So I'm going to ask, if I may, the audience to answer three questions. Uh, these are very simple questions, uh, and they're just two rules that apply. First of all, I'm going to ask everybody just to put their phones down and put their eyes up and answer together as a group. And you have to answer out loud immediately. Now, these questions are simple questions. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you the first question. The first question is, what color is that? That's, that's pretty good. I heard a few voices. We can probably do better than that. Let's, let's try that again. What color is that? OK, that's good. Now, now we, we, we are getting there. So, so that's the first question. Remember the rules. Three questions. Answer all three questions as an audience straight away. Your challenge is to just get all three correct. Let's give it a go. What color is that? White. What color is that? White. What do cows drink? OK, I, I definitely heard a few people just tell me that cows drink milk, which perhaps gives me 10 minutes or so of your time to now tell you a little bit more about the picture just behind me. Uh, because in many ways, the picture just, just behind me there is typical of a United World Schools, a UWS project. This is from a village called Pong Tech in northeast Cambodia. To get there, you sort of take the road up from Phnom Penh. Uh, you then turn left, drive through the jungle for a while, through the paddy fields, and eventually you arrive in an ethnic minority, indigenous, remote community. And that community has very little even basic infrastructure, including a school, or it used not to have a school, because that photograph was taken in April of this year. It's probably the first time they have had a whole school photograph, because it opened the month before. And to some extent, that photo sort of captures what we do. We work with remote and marginalized communities to give out-of-school children the opportunity to go to school. So for this, the next uh, few minutes, I'd like to, if I may, just give you a little bit of context about us as a charity, about United World Schools. And I'd like to, to focus on a partnership with the organizers of this conference, Terrapin, who are sponsoring a school in Cambodia that we're bringing to life together in partnership. And then I'd like to, to invite the audience uh, to, to ask any questions or comments just to finish up. The vision and mission of the charity is on the screen. I'll let you read that at your leisure. If I can just pull out three key points from the, the, those statements. The first one is we work where we wanted. This isn't a sort of colonial turn up and we're going to build you a school thing. We're working with communities who ultimately want us there and governments who also want us to be working in their countries. Secondly, we work where we're needed. We're working in areas where there are large populations of out-of-school children, i.e. children who will never see the inside of a classroom unless we do something about it. And the third point, and this is a really key focal point, I think, for, for the conversation today, which is about partnerships. You know, it's fantastic to see so many organizations come together and talk about pedagogy, talk about the education industry, and that's very much at the heart of what we do. Partnerships are absolutely key because I suspect most people get out of bed as an educator knowing that education at its core transforms lives. And, and that, that couldn't be more true with those children who are living in some of the poorest communities on the planet. Frankly, basic education has the opportunity to completely transform their lives. So look, thank you for the opportunity to, to come along and, and speak today here, here in Singapore. Thank you to, to the Terrapin team for inviting us. In some ways, it's really nice, actually, to connect our, our schools in Nepal, in Myanmar, and Cambodia with the, the network of schools and educational organizations represented today. To, to some extent, we're, we're connecting the elite, you know, those leading the education industry with those at the other end of the spectrum. It, it just feels like quite a good fit. 
That's probably enough from me as an introduction. If I could just pause briefly, and uh, if you guys could just show that video for two minutes. Hopefully that just gives a little flavor of, of what we do. Uh, and I won't talk for, for too long uh, about us and our model, but ju just to give you a snapshot, a whistle-stop tour of what, of what we do. Uh, we're scaling up a model that uh, is now approaching 100 primary schools in remote and marginalized areas. Uh, and therefore, by doing that, we have a reach of, of around 17 to 18,000 children currently, all of which previously had no school to go to. When we sort of look at the projects, and we scratch our heads and we think about what makes them successful. Two words are almost always at the core of our answer, and I suspect they won't surprise anybody here. Those two words are local empowerment. We employ brilliant local teams, really committed people who are passionate about helping people in their own country. We work directly with communities, we liaise with them to make sure that they are fully bought in to the school development process. We commit to community teacher training. What that means is that the community teachers from the very community where we're building a school who speak the same language as the children are able to communicate with children, i.e. reducing barriers to entry into education. And then the sort of third point, or the third picture on the, on the screen behind me, is also fundamental to what we do. It's all about reducing barriers to entry to education. You know, we're not a health or water organization, but we do know that children who have access to clean drinking water are more likely to be healthy, and therefore more likely to turn up to school, more likely to be learning as a process. So we put a simple tube well into communities where we can, and a simple water filtration system to make sure children are drinking clean water. It is kind of ultimately basic stuff. And as a result, because it is actually fairly basic, we, and I mean this in the, in the sort of nicest and most respectful possible way, we work in low-cost areas. So that means we can develop a school for 30,000 US dollars, that's about 40-something thousand Singapore dollars. And once it's up and running, we can run that school for about 10,000 US dollars a year. Or to put it another way, once we've got the school operational, it costs us about a dollar per child per week to give that, that child a proficient, basic primary education. We fund the overheads of the charity through separate campaigns as our school building campaigns, i.e. the school that Terrapin have supported, 100% of that money is going directly towards that school development project uh, because we restrict the funding that we receive to the territory where the project uh, is being built. So, so hopefully uh, responding to any concerns about financial transparency, which we know is vitally important for all charitable organizations. As part of what we do, we focus on partnerships at, at several levels. And 
for sustainability, one of the most important partnerships that we foster and develop are with our partner schools and partner organizations around the world. So we have about 19 different countries represented in different schools and different organizations, all of which are partner with a specific community which hopefully creates a one-on-one, -on -one, very clear, tangible impact story that people can get behind. That to some extent, by creating that direct connection, we're connecting those who really, really need support with those who are really committed to giving it. As a result, together, we're helping a lot of people out of poverty. The partnership that we facilitate with partner schools, to some extent, I'll just get, again, just give you a snapshot here. Uh, we try and do it in a bespoke way wherever possible. Typical themes are, look, people, and particularly children who are part of the partnership, want to know what their activities are achieving. So they want regular photographs, and we try and send those once a term to give people an update from their school so they can see exactly what's happening in Cambodia, Myanmar, or Nepal. The citizenship badge program is a way we try and recognize young people who are being active global citizens, who are really committing to the cause by learning about it, sharing strong messages, and acting. For example, running a fundraising campaign. And just to reward them, we issue them with either a bronze, silver, or gold badge. Just a little addition to their academic CV. Thirdly, for teachers and school leaders, we, we try to share useful educational materials so that they can lead assemblies, they can lead lessons in a way that works for their children. And for a, for a select group, uh, sort of on, on an invitation basis, because we have to be slightly sensitive to our in-country teams, we do invite partners and schools to come out and see their project in Cambodia, in Nepal, so they can see the, the tangible difference that their support is making. So let's go on a little bit of a journey. In fact, what I'd like to do is take you back to that fantastic airport in Singapore, and we're going to hop on a plane. And in my world, you can do this. Uh, you can fly directly to northeast Cambodia, where you're going to touch down in the middle of the jungle. You're then going to jump in a 4x4, uh, which, because it's jungle tracks, uh, will probably get stuck, uh, because it's muddy and, and there's lots of big holes. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll form some kind of self-rescue. Uh, this actually is our country director, Sita, uh, literally performing a, a self-rescue, winching one of our vehicles out of a big hole, and eventually you will arrive at one of our communities. In fact, this is Vern Hoy community, which is partnered with Terrapin, the, the organizers of, of this conference, and where we are currently developing a community school for those children that you can see just behind me, and many more. If we take any one of those children, in, in fact, if, if we take the photograph on the left, the, the two girls sat on the steps. If you are eight years old, you're illiterate, you're a girl, there's no school in your community, you're living in an ethnic minority remote community in one of the poorest countries in the world, your life chances, to be completely frank with you, don't look great. But together we can do something about that, and that's exactly what we are doing right now in Vern Hoy and around 100 or so other communities in some of those countries mentioned. This photograph was taken about a year ago. This is part of our community consultation process, i.e. community empowerment, where we're meeting with the leaders of the Vern Hoy community to discuss roles. By doing that, we're implementing accountability structures so that people are clear on who does what to make sure the project is managed, organized, led in the right way. This photograph was taken a few months later. It probably doesn't look like much. Uh, but for the Vern Hoy community, this is a major milestone. Th across those rough jungle tracks and into the community, we've delivered appropriate materials, local materials sourced from local markets, uh, local labor, again sourced from local labor pools, to develop the school from a standard blueprint. One of the reasons we use a standard blueprint is we know down to the screw or nail what these schools cost, what they require to be developed, and so therefore we can roll out a relatively simple model fairly quickly. And by fairly quickly, a few months later, in fact, just after the monsoon, we're out the ground. This photograph was taken about a month ago. 
Right now, in Vernhoy, that school is being finished. Our objective is to get this school open as quickly as possible uh, for, for no other reason than it means some of these children will be able to go to school, which, which fundamentally is, is what we're all about as an organization. To sort of finish up, if I can just maybe just reflect on, on two, two or three ideas. Uh, the first one is just to remind everybody that we work in these remote communities because we are able to do so because of the partnerships we form with organizations around the world, such as Terrapin. So this is an open invitation to invite anybody here today to have a conversation with us about partnering their organization or their school with us so that we can put more children, like the ones you see behind me, into education as quickly as possible. I'd like to say thank you very much uh, for the invitation to talk today. Thank you very much for the time uh, that, that, that you've given us. Um, and thank you very much for humoring me and telling me, or reminding me, what cows drink. Uh, folks, thank you very much. Uh, I'd be delighted to take any questions from the floor. This is where this goes quiet. Do we have any questions? No, I think you're off the hook, Tim. Perfect. Uh, I'll be in the breakout area, uh, just uh, to, to the back of the, of the room after these plenary sessions. Please do come along and have a conversation. Uh, alternatively, if you'd like to hear more, please just put United World Schools into uh, a search engine. Our website will come up, and our contact details are just on there. It would be terrific to hear from you. Uh, so once again, Many thanks, much appreciated, and enjoy the rest of the conference.